So, I'm a real tinkerer. Uh, my real interest, though, is in free energy. And I was looking at um, Patrick Kelly's book, which is available online, a uh, huge thing, a couple of thousand pages, uh, and it's a really good review of um, all the sort of free energy stuff that's going on around on the internet. Uh, and I came across something by a guy called Art Porter. Uh, he calls it the gapless motor, and you can have a look at his website, which is www.gap-power.com where he has some pretty in-depth and um, detailed descriptions uh, of this motor that is made. Um, great website, lots of really good videos, uh, and um, kind of easy to duplicate what he's done, so uh, my idea was to duplicate it. Now, Art uses these uh, neo-magnets, and they're huge, I mean, they're massive things. They're like this, and about this thick, and he's got like half a dozen of them or so, and those are really expensive things. So my idea was to reproduce the motor, but on a much smaller and, if you like, affordable scale for a bit of home experimentation. So what I used was um, a couple of little neos, a centimeter by 0.5, one of those, and 15 one centimeter by 0.2 centimeter thick discs. So this is what I came up with. Here you've got a 4mm brass bar and there's a bit of 6mm um, plastic tube there. Inside here, where you can see the screwdriver pointing to, that's the 0.5cm by 1cm neo bar magnet. It's rammed into the plastic tube and then the plastic tube is fitted onto the end of the brass bar. And that gives me a slide up. On this side, you've got the one centimeter by two millimeter stack of disc neos, and there's about 15 of them running up there to make Art's base magnet section. That's the coil that he was talking about, and in there there's a 0.8 millimeter soft iron core, which I made from uh, a nail of all things. I sawed the nail down and um, filed it flat. Then I stuffed it in a bit of uh, plastic, cut a couple of discs for it, and then wound some 26 gauge enamel wire in this case, I think. I don't know how many turns there is in that. I just kept it going until it was really, really thick, and then wrapped it with some white electrician's tape in order to hold the whole thing together. Now if I give that a little push, you can see, there you go, that's what Art's talking about about the repulsion of the magnets. So we've got south-south facing each other here and they'll push against each other and force the thing apart. Now, Art uses a mechanical, and the other applications I've seen use a mechanical device um, to time it. Um, it seemed like a lot of construction to me and seemed like a bit unnecessary. So what I did was I got this A-stable 555 switch timer. Um, I bought this from Maplin for a fiver uh, lovely little kit, goes together, the 555 is right there, runs this relay here, and the relay is going to obviously switch this coil off and on, uh, and that's my timing. Now, this particular one allows you to alter the period and the on time with these two resistors here. So obviously being able to alter those means I'm going to be able to alter the mark space ratio. So, you know, the amount of time between the on and the off position and um, the amount of time between each switch. I think my memory says that Art says it should be about 43%. If you want to bother timing that, then you've got some fairly accurate control available here to you to allow you to time it. This particular timer uses a 100 microfarad um, electrolytic capacitor as part of the timing circuit and um, it's a bit big so it switches quite slowly uh, I suppose I might turn, swap that out for something smaller to get a, a greater frequency rate out of it anyway let's get this thing going and you can see it running so I've got this thing hooked up to a 12 volt battery and here we go So there you are, 
doing exactly what Art said it would do, only pretty slowly. And as I said before, that's because of the capacitor. So what I'm thinking of doing is swapping that capacitor out for something of a much lower value. That way I'll get a bit of a higher frequency. Now, one of the things that Art did uh, was a really cool kind of cam that he had for turning this linear motion into a rotary motion. But um, it occurred to me that this bit here, if all he did was stick a load of magnets facing north and south out and put that through a coil, then it, it would function itself as a linear alternator and you'd get direct output without having to um, convert that into rotary and then the rotary to um, run another alternator. Art talks about this as being a generator in itself but then he's capturing the back spike from this coil so obviously improvements on this would be uh, some way of capturing the back spike, possibility of an array of magnets here with the coil round as an alternator, uh, increasing the frequency that we can get and playing around with the mark space ratio. Anyway I had quite a bit of fun building this, it took about, I don't know, it took most of the day actually. Um, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the replication.